Hello, I thought I'd make a video that no one will watch. Um, when I'm depressed, I often return to old music. And this track is an old track that I recorded, originally recorded, a long time ago. Um, I'm going to have to go and look now, because I didn't do my research. And we do have Hannah here in the room snoring which is nice usually she runs away um, let me have a look I'm trying to find out exactly where it might have been maybe about 95 would it yeah it was around 1995 ish I would have known exactly when uh, about 95 I think it was actually more 94 than 95 part of me thinks it was 94 but it must have been 95 if the if the tape block says it's 95 it was 95 but anyway what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna one I'm gonna talk about the track and how it was recorded but also I'm gonna show how we kind of modernized it or dragged it into the 21st century crikey when you think of it like that because originally this was recorded on a four track on a four track on a, a Vestax MR44 if I'm clever I would have drawn dropped in a picture of said four track which was built like something you'd have found on a Russian submarine it was a uh, quite industrial in its design but it allowed me to do this. It's one. It's what I blew my student grant on. A four track, and it's where all this nonsense began back in the day. But yeah, this song is about being depressed and having nothing to do, and that's why I'm making this video. For I'm here alone, whilst the kids and the misses are away, trying not to to kill myself, and so I thought I'd make this video instead. It's a jolly start. But it's called Nothing to Do, and it was recorded when I was unemployed and I'd been I was applying for lots of work and not getting anywhere. Wait a minute. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's like history's repeating itself. It's like I've always been in this useless state. Oh my fucking goodness. But anyway, let's have a listen. Now what I'm gonna do, I've got to put the headphones of shame on so I can hear what I'm doing. But we're gonna do the screen. Um, eh, you get it, you'll understand. So here is the original four track material, uh, we'll play it. As you can hear, it's pretty flat, pretty scratchy. When I get up, it's half past There's two. those wonderful vocals. Start in the morning, the afternoon. Turn those down a bit. Why should I get up? There's nothing to do. But it sounds like it was recorded on a four track. Now, to explain a four track, how a four track works, you have four, indeed four, tracks of audio. Indeed, four tracks of audio. Imagine that. What you do is you record your, your, your drums. In this case, it's an Alesis HR16B drum machine, and your bass and your and your rhythm guitar, and then by clever using mixing and EQ, you mix them down to four tracks. So, all three tracks are mixed onto one track in mono, and that's how you do it. It's how the Beatles recorded Sergeant Pepper's. Remember that. So your bass, and drums, and guitar rhythm. Uh, on that track and then these tracks get uh, overwritten you write over these to record vocals or another rhythm guitar guitar track or keyboards or whatever so it's a, it's what's known as a destructive uh, recording technique because you're going to end up destroying what you've done as you go on and and that's what we see here so yeah the sound sounds fairly flat so what can i do to make Everything sound a little bit more modern. Um, as I've described, we've got the drums, bass, and rhythm guitar on this track, 
and it sounds pretty dull. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, the EQ in Logic to just give it a bit more presence, but I've reduced the bass slightly because when I run it into a compressor it might distort somewhat. Now I use the, again, Logic, Logic Pro plugin compressor perfectly serviceable. This is the Type U Aggressive and when I um, turn this on this is going to make all the difference. It really boosts it. But as you can agree, it still sounds kind of flat. And this is where I use uh, this plugin called Ozone Imager. This has got this from the Isotope website and I think it was a freebie back in the day. And what this does is this takes a mono uh, sound source and gives it a bit more presence. It, it, it says it stereo rises, is it? but it really just kind of makes it wider, um, makes it, yeah, sounds as if it's stereo, but um, but yeah, if you, you it, it's a gimmicky type of thing. I mean, you can get a similar effect using uh, stereo reverb to give you the track a bit more presence, but I'm using this one because through trial and error, this sounded the best. And so I'm going to turn this on. What I'll do is I'll play it so you can hear it and then I'll turn it on. Instantly. That's it off. And that's it on. And it instantly makes a difference to the track. Now we've got two other two other guitar tracks on here. Again, like I said, it was a destructive form of recording, so we wiped three of the tracks and we put rhythm guitar, lead guitar, and a vocal on it. So the first rhythm guitar, well, sorry, second rhythm guitar, sounds a bit flat, as you can hear. Not a lot going on, but again, we're going to use compression, electric guitar, compressor. That instantly gives it a bit more presence. And I'm going to tweak the EQ. Makes it very gritty. And then use a bit of reverb. And this one is just the I'm just using a room reverb in chroma verb to just to sound like it's in a plate, you know, it's got a plate reverb on it. And so we mix that together, that should make all the difference. That makes all the difference, it adds a bit more life to it. Uh, then we've got a lead guitar, which is again very... It's like a wasp in a tin can. So again, I'm going to go in. That sounds a bit better. It's a bit shrill. And then comp it. Use a bit of compression. Again, electric guitar. And finally, use a bit of delay. This is a micro plate. And we'll bring those elements together. We should have trans transform them. I think in a bit that makes all the difference and you've got all the frequencies covered, you can hear the bass, you can hear the guitars. Again it's it's really a, it's a, it's a it takes a bit of time and skill to actually be able to do this. <sighs> But, you know, it's all about frequencies at the end of the day. It's all about EQ. EQ is probably the most important tool in, in your box here, in your toolbox. Now, we're going to do the vocals. Oh, goodness. Now, the vocals were originally recorded on a £20 Tandy microphone in the living room of my grandparents' flat. So, that's why they sound like this. When I get up, it's half past two. Not in the morning, the afternoon. Why should I get up? There's nothing to do. 
I've got no work on, nowhere to go. Now I've noticed that there's reverb on that, and I think I've I've run the microphone through my guitar effects pedal, which was a Zoom 9000 at the time, and given it a little bit of reverb, but it's still very muddy. So again, what I'm doing here is I'm using something called Easy Mix. Now this isn't, I think there might be a, a demo version of this available. This is from ToonTrack, and I use this because it's got a it's got a um, some presets that I really like and one of them is indie vocals and again if we play this again just by turning this on it adds like a reverb and EQ and compression already but hey I then go on and tweak it a bit more because you know when I get up it's half past two gives a bit more presence in the morning the afternoon why should I get up there and then like I said I'm going to add a bit of uh, EQ to that just to just to scoop it. And I get up, it's half past two. Just to Not in the knock off some of those lower frequencies. Because I think that Why they're gonna interfere with the bass guitar frequencies. And then finally, and I don't know why I've done this, I've compressed it with natural vocal uh, compressor. And that should give it a little bit more of a boost as well. Get up, there's nothing to do. I've got very no minimal work, compression on that. To go. If I do go out, there's no money to spend. Barely minimal. Don't talk to anyone. I don't know why I've included it, but I have. But now, when we mix it all together, it should sound. It should sound a bit more. What we'll do is we'll build the track up. So we have the drums. Rhythm guitar. So there you go, and that's how you take a, a, four, a song that was recorded on the four track and drag it kicking and screaming into the 21st century. Yeah. I've turned something that was very flat and very four tracky and expanded it and made it a bit more three dimensional. Well, it's two dimensional, but is it three dimensional? Three dimensional sound, I suppose. You do get a kind of three dimensional sound out of stereo speakers if you if you want. But um, yeah, I've kind of used. The various um, tools and tricks in my armory to turn something very old and very scratchy and nasty and give it a little bit of life and but then you come into the question of is it is it authentic because the original recording was the authentic thing with the technology at the time is this cheating i always ask myself but yeah the whole point of this video was to maybe Maybe if you've got some I don't know, old four track songs that you think have finished. So I've taken the headphones off, I can hear the dog snoring now. <laughs> Maybe you've got some old material, you know, that you think's finished that you can using Logic Pro or a door of your choice because remember you can um, you can it's gonna walk with that because I'm that's better. <laughs> it's very bright. Um, you can use a door of your choice because a lot of these um, digital audio workstations have compressors and EQs built into them and you can use them. There's no difference between using Logic because that is the application of my choice. 
but yeah this was just a video to get you thinking about what you can do to liven up an old recording you know go back see what you can do to fix it um, and that's that so yeah I'll probably give this a, title, a clickbaity title of turning your four track songs into 21st century songs or something um, so yeah that's it I don't think anyone's going to watch it because that's YouTube but hopefully the old faithful who tune in have enjoyed this and got to see behind the curtain at the innermost workings at the at studio lock but yeah this, this was recorded many years ago um, on old ancient technology and now like I say using computers we can you know bring things back and, and, and redo them hopefully you've enjoyed the video um, that's it maybe there'll be another one along if I get any reception to this um, yeah thanks for watching there's only one more thing left to say is ta-da She's awake, you know, she's not asleep. She just doesn't like me making videos, like most of my audience. <laughs>